Hey y'all, hi. So today I am shopping my closet and I'm shopping my closet for garments that fit well right now, that suit the weather right now, that I've kept in my closet for a reason, but that I just haven't been wearing for some reason. And then trying to kind of figure out why. Is it just that I haven't been thinking about them? Or is it that I need to focus a little bit on like a fresh way to style them? And then building outfits around each one of those garments to show myself how wearable they actually are and motivate myself to wear them more. I have done this a lot with makeup, but I haven't done this with clothes, not on camera in this exact way before, and it was so fun. Quick disclaimer, this is not a maternity fashion video. These are all versatile staple pieces that I've owned for a while and that I plan to own for years, but I do happen to be pregnant right now and that is clear in the B-roll imagery. I'm not going to mention it again after this, but you'll see it. And if pregnancy is a difficult topic for you and you decide not to watch, believe me, I will totally understand. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, culprit number one, garment number one that I pulled from what feels like the depths of my closet, even though it's so wearable for summer and something that I've loved wearing all through summer for like the past three summers. It's a caftan made from a recycled sari. I got it from Etsy. Everything that I showcase in this video, I will link in the description box down below. So if I miss something, forget to say what it is or where it's from, that's where you'll find the link. This, however, is one of a kind. I'll link the shop that makes these, but each one is made from a recycled sari and then dyed, so they all come out a little bit different. This is just so incredibly wearable, and I don't know why I haven't been wearing it. I think I just haven't thought about it. There are just other things that are fresher on my mind. It just happens all the time when I'm shopping my stash for makeup. I put my mind to digging out the things that I really love and haven't been using, and then when I find them, I'm like, what have I been thinking? I want to wear this tomorrow. I want to wear it now. So that's kind of the case with this. And to remind myself of how easy it is to wear, I styled it in a way that is polished, but really casual. Like could wear it to the grocery store, farmer's market, or to brunch, could walk a long way in it, would work in sort of any level of summer weather. So I just grabbed my most standard shoe and bag combo for the summer. My monochromatic black leather Arizona Birkenstocks. These have really become my go-to summer sandals. I wear them almost every day, honestly. And my go-to summer bag, which is this woven leather bag that I also got from Etsy. I believe it's a dupe for the very popular Dragon Diffusion bag, and I have been so happy with it. It also looks brand new. It looks like the day it was born, even though I've worn it heavily through two summers now. And to dress it up a little bit, I I added these gold bean earrings. They're very wearable, but I also find them a little bit dressier somehow than hoops. They kind of make this outfit into the wear it to brunch version of itself. And I added some additional adornment in the form of this Jenny Bird ankle cuff. I think of this caftan as a house dress, honestly, but putting on a little bit more jewelry than usual or jewelry in a couple of places around the body definitely elevates it for me. And yeah, just putting it all on, seeing how it can come together, seeing how it can be dressed up and down, it makes me want to wear this piece all week. This piece that was truly languishing in the back of my closet, even though it didn't need to be. Upon reflection, I think maybe the reason that I haven't been wearing this is that I've been so enjoying my foray into minimalism. Even though it's not a wild print by any means, compared to the like solid brown and solid solid white dresses that are hanging at the front of my closet that I've been wearing over and over. It's been feeling a little loud, but it's actually not that loud. And this is something that I think really comes through in an active shop my closet project where you take the thing out and you style it for yourself just to see how it will go. I realized that the concept that I had maybe developed about this caftan in my mind was a little bit exaggerated compared to the reality of the thing. And really looking at it and 
putting it on and wearing it around for a second showed me the difference between the reality and the way that I had started to conceive of it over the time that had elapsed since I last actually wore it. Now that I've had it on my body again, it actually feels, even in the context of my pretty minimal aesthetic right now, like a lovely, clean, easy, low-key, and elegant option, and I'm sure that I'll be wearing it soon. All right, garment number two, this Baba knitted cotton top. This, I know, has been languishing for a similar reason. The color, which is actually incredibly neutral, totally fits with my minimal aesthetic, goes with everything else in my wardrobe, and doesn't push the envelope nearly as much as the caftan even does, for example. I had just started to think of it as more of a yellow wheat color than I think maybe it actually is. The last couple of times I almost put it on, I thought, oh, but is this color going to be too much with the makeup that I have on today? What will I wear it with? What will the bottom half of my outfit look like if I wear it? I have this top in black as well, and I've been wearing the black one a lot. And this one, for some reason, as the summer has progressed, I've started to feel like making the color work with my other garments is too much of a challenge, and I have passed over that challenge every time. So today when I shopped my closet, I pulled this out and I was like, I am going to put my mind to making this work with other things in my closet. I'm going to show myself that it can be done. And boy, did I ever show myself that it can be done. So I ended up picking these white linen trousers for the bottom half of this outfit. I've been wearing all white a lot lately, and so it hasn't really occurred to me that these white linen trousers can be paired with tops that aren't white to really beautiful effect. This might actually be the first time I've done it. I've worn these pants a lot. I've just always worn them with a white top. And I accessorized this pairing with the full complement of Jenny Bird tome accoutrement, so the large tome hoops and the tome ear cuff. I really like how all of those pieces work together, and I've been getting a lot of questions about them in the comments whenever I wear them. So that's what those pieces of jewelry all are, and of course I'll link them. For shoes, I went with these M. Jemmy platforms. The shoes have a little bit of a lighter cream color in them, and then they have a little bit of deeper, warmer cream color in them as well, and I really feel like they helped tie the pants and the top together even more without it being too matchy-matchy. And then to finish it off, this amazing white bucket bag that I recently got at a secondhand shop. Obviously, I love the white on white of the bag with the pants, and that was why I originally chose the bag to go with this outfit. But then once I had it all on, I realized that the leather bow that I tie to keep the bag tight kind of echoes the bow on the drawstring of the pants. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't plan it. And then once I had the whole thing on, I was so delighted. So I felt like the whole outfit came together really well. But most of all, you know, relevant to the issue, the shop my closet issue here, which was that I had been starting to feel like this top was difficult for me to wear. I feel like it all ended up looking really clean and all of the white kind of brought out the relaxed sort of minimal quality in the color of the top. A late addition to this outfit after I'd been wearing it for a little bit, I realized that these machete sunglasses would be perfect with it. This isn't my usual sunglass silhouette. I feel like it's very 90s, kind of sharp. I usually go for something really oversized, but I've actually been loving them. I wore them to a house party recently and I got tons of compliments on them. So this is another one that I actually can't wait to wear from tip to toes this entire outfit, including the sunglasses. I ended up surprising myself with how well it came together and really disrupting the narrative that I had built around this garment, this top, that was causing me to wear it less and less. All right, garment number three. This one, I think, was the biggest challenge and also the biggest success. So this beautiful blouse is from the brand Doen. I had a passionate love affair with Doen when I first discovered them, and I still 
really, really like what they do. I have a number of pieces from this brand. One of the best things about it is that everything is so incredibly well made, like truly heirloom pieces, you know? But as my aesthetic has gotten more and more streamlined and clean, I've struggled to sort of reconceive of my Doen pieces as fitting with this new version, this evolved version of my aesthetic. I'm not about to turn around and get rid of them all because I still really love them and I think that there is a place for them in my current style. I'm just still feeling my way towards figuring out that place, like reconciling the sort of slightly prairie-inspired feminine detailing and the prints with the simplicity that I'm after right now. The question is kind of how to style a piece like this to make it feel sharp and chic. So I mulled over this one for quite a while and then I feel like I cracked it. The key was to do something that I have never done, which was to layer a button down over a dress. I just don't tend to do this. I don't tend to style things like this. I feel like a button down is a shirt and should be worn with pants or a skirt. I really have an instinct for economy when it comes to styling and I don't like things to feel sort of extraneous. This isn't necessarily extraneous because it makes sense to have a layer, you know, if you're gonna be somewhere, especially where you're trying to protect your shoulders from the sun or it might get a little bit cold. I don't like to layer random things just for style, like just for how they'll look. And that's why I have shied away from this type of layering before. But in this case, I can see both an aesthetic and a practical argument for it. And when I thought of it, when I finally thought of putting these two pieces together, I was like, oh, this actually does make integrated sense to me. So I got out this simple black tank dress that I've been wearing, put the dough and blouse on top of it and tied it. I essentially only did one button. The buttons on this blouse are so cute. They come in little pairs. So technically I did two buttons. But if it was a normal blouse, it would have just been one button. Then I tied the ends to define the waist. So it kind of changed the silhouette of the top, changed the silhouette of the dress, and then the rest of the styling, I feel the accessories really completed the project of making this blouse feel chic and clean to me. So I went with these gold hoops from Machete, the perfect hoops. They actually are the perfect hoops. I can't believe how lightweight they are. My old stand by elevated summer shoes, the United Nude Loop sandals in black. I've had these for over 10 years at this point. I talked about them recently in my video about investment pieces. This little bag from Mandarin, which is a little independent brand that makes beautiful small leather goods. It's actually my current wallet, so I've been carrying it around inside my other bags, but it's cute on its own. And for an outfit like this, I felt it was perfect with its little wrist strap. But to me, the creme de la creme, the real finishing touch of this outfit that made it all come together is the red lipstick. So I went and got Merit Aperitif, which is a limited edition red for summer, in my favorite lipstick formula. And wearing it, to me, really shows this outfit for what it is and kind of exposes, I think, what my inspiration was all along with this, which is that it kind of reminds me of the imagery associated with the brand Rouge, the clothes that that brand designs, maybe a little bit Cezanne as well. It's this like French girl chic or what it's being, what is being sold as, like what is being marketed as, like a French girl or a French fashion-inspired aesthetic. That, I feel, is where we see this combination of sleekness and chicness with the feminine detailing, like the small floral and the ruffles on this dough and top. So styling the top in a way that sort of aligns with imagery I've seen from those brands, and that means heels, a fitted dress, some jewelry, most of all the red lip. Styling the top in a way that aligns with that imagery suddenly made it all kind together and work with what I feel my best in right now at my core. It was like that is where, inside of that aesthetic is where a top like this can meet me where I currently live. And I was so surprised by how good I felt in this. I was expecting it to be difficult to make this top work, but this is another one. It's like, when can I wear it? Like I'm looking forward on my calendar and trying to find the next time that it's going to make sense for me to wear a thing like this because this is just so exciting to me. 
and it's partly because it feels a little bit fresh and different, even though I built it entirely out of things that were already in my closet. That was the real takeaway for me from this project. Pulling something out that was languishing, like this dough and top, and then pushing myself to find a way to make it work for me now. Going over different possibilities, thinking about different aesthetic inspirations. It didn't just kind of give this top a new lease on life in my wardrobe, but it gave me something new as well. It gave me a fresh take on what I consider to be my current style. I think that one thing we run the risk of, those of us who get really into a specific aesthetic or a specific style and then really relish emulating that, as I'm doing right now with kind of moving towards streamlining everything, we run the risk of it being too on the nose too much of the time. At least I know that I run that risk, right? I want to go all in. I want it to everything to just be fully and completely and without cease the one way that is the most exciting for me right now. But with aesthetics, if you lean too hard into any one thing with no nuance, it can develop a kind of flatness. And I feel like this outfit, this last outfit really showed me how relaxing the boundaries a little bit and just incorporating something that's a little bit outside of my current comfort zone, like frills and floral print, can make that whole comfort zone come alive. So I really recommend this Shopping One's Closet. I'm so glad that I got the chance to do it and to build a video around it. It certainly won't be the last time. And I can't wait to read what you have to say about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm so grateful, as always, to those of you who like my videos with the thumbs up. Very grateful to everyone who has subscribed. And I hope that all of you watching are taking extra good care of yourselves so that you can be the most effective version of yourselves as you do your work in the world.